Hello, students. I just wanted to go over with you um, the slideshow from yesterday to think about concise writing. Um, the biggest thing that you need to know is if you can get rid of a word, get rid of a word. We don't want wordy essays. Uh, that's not cool. Um, one of the things that makes some of the essays wordy is you, you, you use a lot of words to say something easy. So like this commercial says certified pre-owned, all they had to say was used. It means the same thing. Remember that in your essays, you are always going to stay in third person. So you don't want to say things like, I think that, I believe that, I feel that, in my opinion. All of these things make it feel like the paper is about you instead of your topic. Also, you never want to talk about the writing in the writing. So you're not going to say things like, the paper will show, this quote shows. That's unnecessary. Not only does it make it wordy, it's kind of stupid because a paper can't show anything. A quote can't show anything. They're not people. They don't have hands. Um, so we don't talk about the writing in the writing. You don't want to bore readers with wishy-washy or useless adjectives, kind of, sort of, specific, really, basically. Um, those are just space holders that don't say anything. They're also not helping you to prove your thesis statement. And if you're not proving your thesis, then what are you doing? Uh, my mood generally depends on certain factors that are actually related to the type of foods I eat. Instead, my mood is related to the food I eat. By removing all the wishy-washy words, I make my sentence more convincing. Here's another example. If you really want to bore your readers, here are some surefire ways to do that. But you don't want to bore your readers. So don't use wishy-washy words. A lot of times we think that more is better. So if one word is good, then lots of words must be better, right? Wrong. Too many words can be ugly. So one of the things you can do is remove some of those prepositional phrases. An employee with ambition is just an ambitious employee. The decision of the judge is just the judge's decision. Use who, which, and that sparingly. Extra is not always good. Sometimes extra is just extra. The report, which was published recently, more concise would be the recently published report. So how can you change phrases into single words? That's very important and uh, very significant into writing something that is concise. Also, many of the phrases that you use can be replaced with just one word. Many of you in your essays write things like, given the fact that. What you all you need is because. In light of the fact that. What you really mean is since. I think you get the hint here. Whenever you have a phrase like this, you ought to be able to go back and turn it into one word. In the time that, you just need to say while. Being wordy with things like it is, there were, there are, it was, those are a real surefire way to make your, senten your sentence wordy and boring. Instead of saying there was a big explosion which shook the windows and there were many people running into the street, you can just say a big explosion shook the windows and people ran into the street. 
So think of ways that you can make your sentences stronger by making them less wordy. One important thing is to use action verbs instead of passive verbs. The cat ate the goldfish. Ate is an action word. Scientists presented the report. Presented is an action word. Many of you will say scientists had presented the report. That's not proper English, but also it's adding words you don't need. The teachers ate the cake is much more better than the cake was eaten by the teachers. Miss Rowe opened a Dr. Pepper Zero is a much more concise sentence that uses an active verb instead of a passive verb like a Dr. Pepper Zero was opened by Miss Rowe. Don't be redundant. If you want to be wordy, that's a sure way to do it, is repeat yourself over and over. This sign is a great example. The name of the company is Pizza Hut. I don't need you to tell me we have pizza. I expect you to have pizza, your Pizza Hut. Unnecessary repetition is redundancy. It makes things longer, not better. So eliminate those expressions, and these expressions won't make your writing sound silly. You don't need to say basic fundamentals because basic and fundamental are the same word. You don't need to say true facts because in order to be a fact, it must be true. Some words imply their general categories, so we don't have to state both. For example, we already know that pink is a color and that shiny is an appearance. She wore the color pink could just be she wore pink. Avoid cliches like it's easy as pie, one in a million, it dug its own grave, she felt like a million bucks, happy as a clam, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, and avoid things like very, really, extremely. These intensifiers can usually be replaced with a much better word. George Orwell said that intensifiers like very, really, and extremely are leeches that infest the pond of prose. Leeches suck the blood, suck the life-giving blood out of creatures, and that is what intensifiers do. So rather than using enhancing words like she is very pretty, she is attractive, she is appealing, or she is very pretty, instead say things like she is attractive, she is appealing, she is beautiful. All of those are better words than a simple word like pretty with an intensifier in front of it. The very last thing you need to understand is sometimes you will need a lot of words, but those words must be necessary and not just wordy words. For example, the effects of ill-conceived laws can have wide-ranging negative consequences. That is a great thesis statement. It's a good topic sentence. It's very much a punch in the face. It tells me exactly what the paragraph or the paper is going to be about. Also, it's not overly wordy. It doesn't repeat the same things over and over again. So, I hope this helps.